Hi, this is Todd Malakoth, and today I'm going to look at the SEO Moz tool set. It's a wonderful tool set put together by Rand Fishkin and crew at SEO Moz. Make sure you've learned just about everything you can learn about SEO. The one thing that you learn at the end is what I call the SEO playbook and execution. And basically that content links are to SEO what blocking and tackling is to football. It really is the fundamentals. You have to learn to create good content, how to package it, everything else, and how to deliver it, how to distribute it, and then how to get links to it ultimately for, for better rankings. And there's tools that do this. Um, and the SEO tool set at uh, SEO Moz has been founded primarily around Linkscape, their, their pinnacle tool, which is really excellent in terms of mining competitors' backlinks. If the search engines ever decide that they don't want to show backlink data anymore, which Google essentially did several years ago, um, this this is the last thing we have left. So, so at a certain point we said, you know what, we should have this, and Rand actually executed on this and made this beautiful thing happen. So um, Linkscape is the result of that. And from there we have some other great tools to conduct our SEO with. And we're going to take a look at some of those, um, some of my favorites in terms of execution. I'm going to kind of cherry pick through this list and show you my personal favorites of the SEO Moz tool set. So the first tool I'd like to touch upon is very high level, and it's a visualization platform for Linkscape data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look and see Brainwaves Toys are demo store versus Toys R Us, the big dog in the space. Where are they beating us and why? Now let's look a little deeper at this, and this gives us very top level information on six of the most important variables here. Um, so we're going to get a little matrix here down below to see exactly what the difference is between Toys R Us and Brainwave Toys. So we'll see the overall score, 61 to 47. We're not too far out. We're in striking distance with even Toys R Us in terms of a solely search perspective, um, which is, is pretty impressive. So we'll see that the, the Moz Rank and the Moz Trust, which are SEO Moz's technologies for identifying trust and overall link popularity of a page, and then the subdomain Moz Rank and subdomain uh, Moz Trust or domain Moz Trust would be the domain level information. So we're looking at domain level, we're looking at page level, in this case the home page, and the overall score or why they're ranking for these terms. Uh, total external links, you can see that Toys R Us has quite a few more. The SEO Moz numbers in relationship to Yahoo backlink numbers are going to be a little bit less. Um, they're actually going to come in probably anywhere from two to ten times less volume in terms of links than uh, Yahoo. So the overall information that we really want to glean from this is that is, is where we need to execute better, where we need to get more links, where we do, need to be more trusted, do we need more content, that sort of thing. So we can see overall kind of where we're getting beat. And most of the times that comes back to off-page optimization. Not necessarily optimization specifically, but content building, any ways, link baiting, any ways that you can get more of these links. This is what we learned after we've learned all the fundamentals of SEO is ultimately it really comes down to powerful links, trusted sources, and really appealing to the web as a whole. A good user experience is always going to be a big part of SEO. Building great sites, content, being king, uh, all these things are really playing a big part in SEO and it, it pains me to see these um, articles all the time on Fox News and different places saying that SEO is a sham and whatnot because SEO is just a tool in the toolkit. It's a tool to make your site better for search engine for search engines um, to get more traffic through marketing to execute better on marketing and uh, the SEO Moz tool set are the types of tools that help you to do that in a legitimate way um, with minimal risk. So this is what we have to look at with between Brainwaves Toys and Toys R Us. If we want to be really competitive we need probably hundreds if not thousands more links um, with the right anchor text for the right keywords to rank in areas that we want to try to rank for and this gives us a realistic view of what to expect from our SEO efforts. So as you can see, I like to really start in the areas that I would do if I was doing my keyword research, my competitive analysis. So these are the these are the tools that I would start with first. So one of the first is the keyword difficulty tool. Now, in and of itself, the keyword difficulty tool has some flaws in it, but there's certainly some information to be gleaned here. So if you've watched the Cobb score video about competitive analysis and opposition to benefit ratio, um, this is really where the opposition comes in. This is the opposition 
field of Cobb score. So opposition is essentially how difficult is it to rank in the top 10 for a given phrase. And for educational toys, you can see it's actually pretty competitive. So we're going to base that on the number of searches in a day, which um, I fudged this number. This is You're supposed to enter this out of Word Tracker. The total number of Google search and quotes, all in title, and several other uh, factors here. Average page strength of the 4 through 10 results, everything else. So there's some really nice information to be gleaned here. And you can see just how difficult it is to rank for these terms. So I would uh, usually take a look at this in combination with the actual search results. I would look at something like toys and then turn on a toolbar that would show me all the unique linking domains, um, everything else. So uh, SEO for Firefox uh, from Aaron Wall is really nice for that. keyword research you should do this beforehand is the term extractor just run your term th or run your website through this it's going to give you a bunch of terms back you can do with this with your competitors you can see what words should probably be on your page what syn synonyms they're using and and really get some ideas for writing your body copy so check out the targeted or the the term extractor to develop your targeted keywords for keyword research you'll see up at the top my toolbars, I have SEO book up there and SEO Moz. And SEO book is going to tell you some nice things like total unique and total domains from Yahoo. And then you can compare that with the Linkscape scores. And there's a pretty good balance there. Uh, SEO Moz is spidering a little bit less of the web with Linkscape. But if you knew how much it took to actually spider as much of the web as they do, you probably wouldn't complain about that. So they're, I mean, they're competing with Yahoo, who has hundreds of millions of dollars to build search technology or, or Google or whomever. So um, so not being able to do the entire web, probably not something to complain about. So you can see with SEO Moz, we're looking at their page score, their subdomain score on the toolbar there. And uh, what we're looking at, with, with that turned on and the SEO book toolbar turned on, I can really do some amazing things. I can surf the web and look at competitors and really get an idea of who is most competitive in the space. So I can take a look at their overall page trust. Uh, this page in particular has a Moz rank of 5.27 and a Moz Trust of 5.37. It has 65 links from 39 root linking domains, and the site as a whole has a half a million links from over 12,000 unique linking domains or root subdomains, which are one and the same. So uh, this toolbar having this turned on is really, really valuable. We haven't looked exactly at Linkscape yet. We'll do that in a minute, but this is important to have on when you're doing your competitive analysis, when you're doing your comp keyword research. So this is one of the very first things in the tool set that I would turn on and, and really have a good time with is the uh, SEO Moz toolbar. Next we're going to take a look at the backlink analysis tool. And this is a really tough tool to actually write. Um, I've worked with Jim at WeBuild Pages, um, various other people to try to write this tool. And scraping anchor text is a very difficult thing to do without really um, having a ton of resources because you have to find the anchor text, you have to find every page and then find the anchor text in every page, which is pretty difficult to do. Um, so it's a very valuable tool as well. We can see if we're trying to rank for something specifically, what do we have a lot of occurrence of anchor text for. And thankfully, uh, Brainwaves does have a lot of occurrences for educational toys, learning toys. Um, of course, your brand name is always going to show up. And this is important to note, this is really why keyword domains do well, is because they have a lot of natural occurrences of the anchor text because it's in their domain name. So you can see we have 52 Brainwaves toys without without www or without http, um, just the mention, just the name itself. So that's why keyword domains are very powerful, not because they have keywords in the domains, but because they tend to get anchor text that's right around the, the uh, exact match keywords. So if you don't have your keyword in your domain, we have toys but not educational, we have to make a concerted effort to go out and get educational and learning into our anchor text. So you can see we've done that in a lot of different areas. Um, and, and we can glean some important information from this. We, we see wh where we're getting specific anchor text. And you can really tell this is probably fifth or so on the list of variables in terms of importance. Um, you have totally unique linking domains. You have total, total domains, um, authority trust, and, and then probably anchor text right after the, that. You, you definitely are what your links say you are. And this tool is going to tell you what your links say you are. So we can also see what our links say about our competitors, or what our competitors' links say about their websites. Um, 
Wonder Brains has a lot of anchor text for educational toys. It's no wonder they do well for educational toys, even though it's not in their domain name. Uh, they have several links here with various different anchor text. They have a good mix of anchor text. Another thing that you can see from this tool is you don't want everything to say your keyword. So if you have 200 occurrences, if they had 500 occurrences and then 11115 in terms of uh, occurrences and it was very very little other occurrences, that that'd almost be overkill. You'd be over-optimizing at that point. You want to make sure that you have an even balance and distribution of natural looking anchor text. You don't want to be looking manipulative with your anchor text. So you make sure that you have a good spread, that you're not um, that you're not just using your keyword, that you're using synonymous terms, that sort of thing in your anchor text. And um, so overall a really nice tool, good good tool to uh, have in the SEO arsenal. So even though I'm an off-page optimization kind of guy, it's good to take a look at some on-page optimization. The next tool we're going to look at is Term Target, and Term Target is going to do exactly that. It's going to grade your page based on the term you're targeting. So we're going to say Brainwaves Toys, we're targeting educational toys. Wow, look at that, we're doing an amazing job on educational toys. We have it in the title, in the URL, uh, in the meta description, not in the heading tags, not that big a deal, um, in the first hundred words, in the body, in bold and strong, again, not a great big deal but it's not a bad idea uh, just for usability and skimming it's in the image alt attributes which is a big deal uh, it's in inbound links and it's in uh, links on the page so all very important to your on page you get a little snapshot here of just exactly where you have your keyword for the term that you're targeting and you can take a look and see that well so we're doing really well on educational toys but you can see that we're not doing very well on learning toys. We haven't put that anywhere. It's not in the title. It's not in the headings, again, which isn't that big a deal. Um, it is in the URL and, meta, URL and meta description, not in the body, not uh, only once in the image alt attributes, and not in any inbound links. So we really need to fix that. We need to make that a little bit better, and we're kind of failing our term target report on learning toys for Brainwave toys. Okay, next tool is going to be the crawl test tool, and what we're going to do here is just enter our URL and say crawl the site, and this is just going to tell us some information about um, making sure that we're getting spidered correctly, if there's any errors in our code, if um, there's any 404s, and in this case it seems to be pretty good. Uh, there's no pages lacking titling, not a lot of duplicate content in the titles, few outbound links which is good, some good internal linking, Pages are indexed in Google. You could probably have a little bit better index coverage in Google. I would imagine there's more than 12 pages, so uh, perhaps getting those indexed would be a good idea. Um, but you can see overall we're going to get some really good information about if our pages are getting crawled. Um, the titles, meta description, which is all good things to have, and good information to know when you're doing your on-page optimization, when you're making sure that your page or when your your site is spiderable, and making sure that you have no errors in 404s. So take a look at this tool. Just look it over real briefly. As with most of these tools, it's just one tool in the toolkit that you use at a certain point when you need this. You need to see that your pages are getting crawled properly. You go hit the crawl test, and then you know for sure. So now on to the big daddy, the crown jewel of the SEO Moz tool set is Linkscape. And this is really what makes Linkscape great. Uh, SEO Moz has went out and created their own index of the web, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, obviously they didn't do it entirely just for altruism, they want to make a profit here too, but it was really a great thing for the SEO community to have this data available. Because if Yahoo ever decided they didn't want to show link domain or site explorer data anymore for backlinks, we would have had nothing and we would have nothing to go off to do our off-page um, backlink optimization and Linkscape has, has prevented that from ever happening as well as given us an extraordinary tool for mining our competitors backlinks for understanding our own backlinks for doing off-page optimization and being informed on just exactly what's going on so you can see so much information from this it's really it really is a game changer in SEO and people don't always realize and they can use other tools and at the end of the day you still have to get those links but going through just for one reason only is going through your competitors backlinks and mining their backlinks and saying where are they getting the best links and let's start with those let's make sure that we have those big links those big powerful trusted links first and then we can work on other types of link development and link optimization so we're going to look at Wonder Brains here again. Poor Wonder Brains, we're always, always gunning for them. 
Um, and they're about a 6.2 out of 10 in terms of Maz rank. So Maz rank equates pretty close to page rank in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm sure Rand wouldn't be thrilled of me making the parallel because uh, page rank is obviously patented, um, and Maz rank is is probably patented by uh, SEO Maz. So, anyways, there's very similar. Both we could refer to both of these as link juice, link link equity, any of these types of things. So Maz rank at the page level is going to be kind of link juice at the page level. Domain Moz rank is that link equity on the site as a whole is your global link popularity. That's how much juice there is from the entire site all the way around. So in terms of their link juice they have about 1700 links coming from 700 unique linking domains. Now these two numbers are among the most influential and revealing about a site's rankings. You can take a look at any search results and these match up pretty closely to the top 10. If somebody has 1800 links from 700 or from 800 unique linking domains, they're probably going to beat these guys. If they had 1500 links from 400 unique linking domains, then they're not going to beat these guys. So this is really hugely important data. And then we can drill down and see actually where they're getting this juice from ordered by MozRank. So this is ordered by the most trusted links passing the most juice. So this is the first place we want to go. We want to go here and we want to look at this and we say, is this a link that we can get to? Can we go sign up with Meva Merchant and get the link that they have? So it looks like a testimonial. That's going to be a tough one to get. But we, we start mining through these backlinks and saying, which ones can we get? Maybe we can be a testimonial. Maybe we can be a testimonial for our uh, merchant processing software. So we want to look at all these things and, and definitely go through the competitors backlinks before doing any other types of link development. This one looks a little bit more promising. Resources, we take a look at this and oh wow look at that we um, have a bunch of outbound links to other pages that um, that might be a pretty good place to start. Gifts and toys. Uh, they, they're probably pretty receptive to a link request and look, man look at that link juice that they have. They have Oh, let me show you the link juice. They have a, a good amount of link juice here. Uh, three thousand links from one, uh, all from the same from this site probably, but then three hundred links from uh, eighty-three unique linking domains. That's not a bad thing, and there's only about thirty links on this page, so that's a pretty good place to start with uh, going to get a link. So we also have one other really cool piece of information here in this link report, in the Linkscape report, is the five most common anchor text and where, how much juice is passing between those. So we can see a lot of these are just for their names, but we can see, oh, look at these ones. These are four percent of these are passing, or are they're passing four percent Moz rank from 189 unique linking domains for this powerful anchor text and they got 244 unique links for this. So we can start to see what we need to have in terms of competition if we exactly target a keyword phrase like that just beyond trying to build our global link popularity. So there's a whole lot of other information that we can pull out of here. Again, this is just going to be when we actually need this information, when we're doing link development, when we're doing competitive research to see just how many links we're going to need, just where we're going to have to get those links from. Uh, we can look at the links to the URL and you could do this on the page level if you wanted to and sort this by all kinds of different fields. If they're coming from the same IP address, we can start identifying if they have link networks going. Um, if they link with the image, it, we can check their alt text. If they have no follow links, if they came from the sub, same subdomains, if there's a link off the screen, which is interesting. So all these things we can tie in and do some filtering and sorting and find the types of links that we want to get and which ones are going to be most powerful, which ones are going to pass a whole bunch of link juice, um, like you can see this one passing 0.17 of the Moz rank. So um, that's obviously not as good as one that's passing 0.23. So we're going to look through that. We're going to have an identified, prioritized list for our link developers. We're going to say these are the ones that we really want to spend some extra time trying to get because they're passing the most link juice. And ultimately, from an off-page perspective, that's really what matters most. Which links are passing the most link juice? So this is what teaches us this and this is a tool that um, identifies that for us and helps us to target those links better when we're doing our link requests. If we move a little bit further down the tab line here we can see we have more information on URL and anchor text or anchor text URL, anchor text for the URL. You can dive down as deep as you want here again we kind of covered this with the other tool um, but you can get this at this level as well. The domain anchor text total common anchor text to the specific domain versus the page. Domain level, page level, good things to keep in mind.
So I really like Linkscape for the competitive analysis aspect of it, and you can see we can learn a whole lot about our com competition's backlinks just from the Advanced Link Intelligence Report here. Uh, we can also learn a whole lot about our links and then what we need. We can compare these metrics and these numbers, which we kind of did a little bit with uh, the visualization tool, to our numbers. And we can look at our numbers and say, okay, where where do we need to improve the most to, to catch up with these guys? Internal links, um, totally unique linking domains. So we got 1,300 from 154, and they got 1,700 from 683. This is substantial here. They have 400 four or five hundred more unique linking domains so much more important than just raw links is the number of total linking domains so we really need to get that up there in order to be competitive and another thing that we can take a look at to running link intelligence on our own site is what are we doing with our anchor text are we making the use are we making use of our anchor text are we maximizing our anchor text and it looks like here you know we have a lot of instances of brainwave toys we're we're passing a lot of this juice just on these top three phrases maybe we can hit some of these people back and send them a link request or a change link request if you will to say hey can you put educational toys or can you put learning toys online from brainwave toys or something like that and make use like we're doing down here a little bit where it says brain brainwaves educational toys um, brainwave toys, it's, I guess that's the same, but um, educational toys, learning toys, this is the kind of anchor text we want versus this. So if we contact some of these people and say, hey, is there any chance you can just add a keyword in here, um, we might be able to get some extra added benefit just by knowing that and contacting those people. So as a whole, you can see I'm a very big fan of Linkscape. Just this alone is a great reason to get the SEO Miles tool set. There's, there's so much that you can glean here. It's absolutely critical and essential for your link developers at this point if you're serious about search engine optimization to have this tool in your arsenal. Um, worth every penny, really should have it. So this, like I said, this is a crown jewel. There's some other really nice tools in here, but get it for Linkscape and love it for everything else. So there's some other really nice link tools in here, one being the Juicy Link Finder, again, for your um, link developers. This is a great tool. You just type, type in your keyword, basically. It's going to go and find you some of the best links. It's going to go say, these are the... Now, it's telling me, obviously, to go get a um, link from Wonder Brains. Probably not likely that our competition is going to link to us. But hey, maybe math and stuff. Oh, and I'm going to go over here and do find links outbound on this domain. There's some really, really nice information to be had here, and it's going to dig up all of those sites that you're probably going to want to try to get links from. You, you can do this from Linkscape on the competition side, drum up all your competition and do it there. You can do it with your competition on this one. And you can see it's going to order everything by page rank, age isn't in here, um, but being able to find outbound links on the pages is, is pretty useful. It's going to search for basically everything and you know what, Google may have even blocked the search, I don't know, the two I did didn't work here. Um, but you can see what they're doing here is pretty ingenious, um, at least as far as I'm concerned, is adding in quotes submit site or add um, within the site. So maybe we can do submit site. Nope, um, let's try add, let's try a URL, just something really simple. So here you go, add URL to links directory. That's pretty straightforward, you can probably get a link there. It looks like Blue Google did actually block that search, which isn't all that surprising. Um, but here's a place where you can actually get a link. Um, you're gonna have to, it looks like you're gonna have to give them a reciprocal link, but hey, you know, sometimes sometimes those are justified. If, if these guys are relevant to us, why not? So if you haven't been able to tell from watching the videos in the past, um, I'm a huge fan of links and I think they're such a huge part of SEO. And SEO Moz has in their labs a new tool called the Competitive Link Finder um, based on similar technology to the Hub Finder that Aaron Wall did at one point. Um, I think there's other ones out there that do very similar things. And essentially what this is going to do is you're going to put in your uh, competitors and it's going to search for places that they have common links. So uh, I think Internet Marketing Ninja had a common link finder. So it's basically going to look through these links and it's going to say where are their common links to all of these different places. And that's going to give us some great opportunities for going and, and mining some backlinks. So let's zoom in a little bit here so we can actually see this. So we start seeing some of these common backlinks. Uh, Feeds.feedburner, probably not there. Uh, best of the web, probably a good place to get a link. Actually, I know it's a place, good place to get a link. Uh, Viva directory, another directory that's probably good. Not quite as good as Batwa, but don't tell. Babel, 
Uh, I don't even know what that is. World Web World Index, probably another directory. Uh, Gizmos for Kids. This sounds interesting. It's actually linking to 10 different pages. So let's give this one a look and see if that's a perspective link. And you can see how much easier link development gets with these tools. Uh, these are links that you wouldn't just find going out there and find that they're linking to all these places. This looks like a really, really good place to get a link, probably. Um, there's just so many opportunities here to discover that you would never find if it weren't for these tools. So check out the Juicy Link Finder. Um, really, really excellent tool for, for link development. Um, you're going to find some great stuff here. You're going to get some new links that are really going to make a difference and really make a dent in your SEO. And that's really what it's all about, folks. It's it's executing on those things that are really going to make a difference. You don't want to spend all your day reading blogs. You don't want to spend all your days uh, worrying about if it italics or bold really helps ranking better. You want to do this stuff. You want to dig in there and find those links and find three links a day. If you find if you find five links a week for the next year, next year you're going to be so much higher on that list, especially in a niche like educational toys where it doesn't really take all that much to move the needle. You can really make a big difference if you play if you spend your time on execution and on using these tools after you already understand exactly how to spend your time, how to prioritize, how to identify these valuable links and and then just get out there and get after them. And these tools are really going to help you to do that. The strongest sub page tool. If we find that page and we can, if we find a page that we can get a link from, if we find a somebody who's going to sell us a link or just offer us a link, the next thing we want to do is go find their strongest sub page. So you could use the toolbar and you could look at those uh, total links and total root domains to a page and just siphon through their page or through their site and click through a couple places and try to find the one with the most. You, that's about it, really. That's about all you can do. And then this is this is the other option, is the strongest subpage tool. I love, love, love this tool. I'm going to try to get SEO Moz to update some of the things on this and make it even better. But what we're looking for here is basically the, the page on a site with the most link juice. And in this case, um, you know, Educational Toys, this page here, is the strongest subpage other than the home page. On some sites, it's... Um, a sub page can actually be stronger than the home page depending on how well linked it is. If it becomes a true resource and people really link it well, a sub page can be a whole lot more powerful than the home page sometimes. So that's important to keep in mind when you're doing your link request and trying to keep uh, get the most link juice passed to your site that you can for any given link. So keep the strongest sub page tool in mind for this and go through and mind people's strongest subpages. You're not going to get a link on their home page, so make sure to find out the the places that you can get a link um, that are going to be stronger, that are going to be more effective, that are going to pass more juice in the long run. So this concludes your guided tour of the SEO Moz tool set. As you can see, there's some wonderful things in here that you should definitely consider implementing in your SEO strategy and execution. There's all these free tools out there. There's some really, really, really good free tools out there. But at the end of the day, paying for Linkscape is worth it because it saves so much time. It helps you prioritize and identify those links. And it's just really an all-around excellent tool and game-changing in terms of SEO. So you really have to consider this. Some great stuff in here. Great stuff in SEO Moz. Come check it out. You'll, you'll really uh, walk away a better SEO. Thanks a lot.